not only have studies shown that religion is connected with charitable giving, mainly in the United States, but also that uh, religion is connected with enhanced uh, reported well-being. That is, people um, report greater life satisfaction when they belong to religious groups. But we also know, uh, in, in fact, studies in uh, neuroscience have shown the brain lighting up um, with pleasure when people give, right? I guess we all get a buzz occasionally when we do something for another person. We can get a, a kind of warm glow inside. So we wanted to kind of get at the question, is it by being, you know, kind of religious that people are feeling greater well-being? Or is it because religion is kind of, you know, evoking charity, getting people to give more, that religion is kind of connected to, 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 to well-being, to life satisfaction. Um, so we can do this with, with the, the, the large number of participants, some of whom are secular, or many of them, about half of whom are secular, and um, about half of whom are not. We can kind of see, okay, we can look at whether it's, is it the charity or the religious affiliation? What, what are the relationship between those three things? Charity, um, well-being, and religious um, affiliation. And so what we found is that um, indeed in New Zealand, just as overseas, we, we, we replicate the effect even in a largely you know, secular society where it's much more evenly distributed. Um, we find that religious people are, are giving more to charity. Um, on average, kind of, um, they're giving about $800 more annually to charity than non-religiously affiliated people. We also find that you know, religiously affiliated people tend to express greater life satisfaction. But we can explain the, in all the benefit of that greater life satisfaction by the amount of charitable giving that happens you know, because people are religiously affiliated. And we can do this because we can look at people who are not religiously affiliated and we can look at their charitable giving. So if you look at people who are not religiously affiliated and giving a lot to charity, they resemble the religious people in their, in their um, life satisfaction, very similar. And we, can, we, can, we, can, we see this even when we adjust for all the kinds of factors that could affect your life satisfaction. In, in particular, in, you know, income, employment, um, whether or not you, you know, have a partner, um, uh, it, your political affiliation, um, uh, you know, your age, your gender, all of those things are included in the model. And yet, you know, we can still see that, it, that it's the charity that's really um, driving that effect. Okay, well, our implication is definitely not to, you know, change people's religious affiliation, right? That's whether you're religious or not, we think that this, um, it's important to understand this phenomenon, this human phenomenon of charitable giving, okay? This is a massive industry. Um, estimates of between 40 to $70 billion a year um, go into the kind of free giving of money and time globally, right? So this is a major force in New Zealand. It's a kind of hidden economy. I think no matter where people stand on a political spectrum or spiritual spectrum, um, all of us are interested in um, tapping into resources that benefit um, people around us. We want, we want the world to improve. We, 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 we disagree about how, but, but everyone I think can agree that the charity is a good thing. Um, and so by understanding not just the behavior, but the kind of, you know, the, the psychological processes and understanding the benefits to individuals and to communities of charitable giving and the kind of factors that drive it, we hope to convey uh, information to the public that will be practically useful. You know, you can, you can through the study, begin to attach dollar values to, um, to the kinds of institutions and uh, the kinds of behaviors that we see, uh, you know, that we don't really see around us, but we know are there. So we're kind of documenting a, what, what, you know, a kind of hidden iceberg. We're kind of assessing its magnitude. And we really want to provide that information to the public um, so that we can begin to improve the world around us. This is uh, part of what we want to do as uh, scientists.